شما يسرهوال يا هو له هينو يا هو خاند باروك شم كبود مالكو فول هولان فوند Shalom everyone, Chief Magician of Mystery Babylon here. Welcome to my holy channel. So today uh, I want to discuss um, what I would term esoteric, Wirianic um, Christianity. I mean, my mistake, esoteric, Wirianic astronomy. I don't know why I said Christianity. Uh, so um, so this video is going to be on esoteric, Wirianic astronomy. And before I get into the essence of the matter, just a very brief exordium. So, um, you know, because we're going to talk about um, you know, the heliocentric versus the geocentric model in astronomy. And essentially, you know, we have an issue, right? Because um, in the 1500s, Copernicus came on the scene and, you know, Copernicus essentially, um, you know, overturned all of the existing astronomical models, you know, up to his time by saying that, you know, the earth is not the center of the universe and it's really the sun and, you know, just, really overturned you know astronomy and so it was a really big issue right because um you know we had a lot of um, biblical proofs and seals um you know to the pre-existing astronomical model um that copernicus overturned right so now in this modern century right um as people are are spiritually growing and maturing right they have to you know they have to make a decision right and within the jewish world right we can divide it into sort of um, you know, three or so camps, right? We have uh, the Jewish secular camp. There, there's a lot of very intelligent secular Jews, um, you know, around the world and even in Israel. Um, they have, you know, um, there's one particular organization actually of secular Jews that um, is basically, um, they work to sort of confute and refute a lot of, um, you know, Jewish religion. Um, and, you know, they believe that the science of the time is correct and, you know, that the ancient sages were incorrect, didn't know what they were talking about and that there's a lot of errors in Jewish religion, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then we have, you know, strong religious Orthodox Jews that still, you know, um, you know, will not uh, believe certain, you know, um, you know, they will not believe this, this, uh, Copernican model, so to speak, right? So you have to come, you know, to sort of a decision and, and see, okay, well, what's, you know, what's the matter? And then you have people in between that try to compromise, you know, somewhere in between and say, okay, you know, um, yeah, the ancient sages didn't, you know, they only were talking about, you know, science as they knew it during their time. And, you know, and now science is saying new things, you know? Um, but that's not, you know, to discount them, you know, um, and there's, those are people that are some, they're like somewhere in between, right? And also what's going on, right? So if you're highly initiated, you know that um, the evil demiurge who is Lucifer runs and controls this, this world, okay? And one of his main missions is to undermine the word of God and undermine the kingdom of God um, here in this world. That's his primary mission. And he is very clever. He's beyond genius. Um, and he has succeeded in many ways in, in undermining the word of God. And if you belong, you know, if you, you know, if you were to belong to the highest, most esoteric levels of, of the Luciferian order, right, you would know some of the people that Lucifer has worked with personally to undermine the word of God. And two big major figures are Darwin and Copernicus, okay? Um, and the, they, they were on the payroll of Lucifer and, you know, their mission was to undermine the, the word of God. Okay. And, and they've succeeded in doing so. Okay. Um, because now the masses are very brainwashed. They're very ignorant. They don't know any better. Okay. It's very, very, very sad. Okay. I'm only speaking to initiates and adepts of the highest order that know, um, about the secret workings that happen. Um, in, in very high places that only a handful of people know about, okay? And so um, that then introduces us into esoteric Lurianic astronomy because 
during the time of, you know, when the Aries all came on the scene, okay, Copernicus had just, uh, you know, had just come on the scene and sort of, you know, revolutionized, you know, astronomy, okay? Um, and so at this time, or after this time, you know, Han Vital wrote, I guess what many would consider a very esoteric book on astronomy. So he wrote a book called um, Safar um, Tehuna. Safar Tehuna is uh, Chaim Vital's very secret book on astronomy. And, uh, you know, I'd say it's a, it's a pretty complicated, you know, advanced book, um, you know, on astronomy. Um, you know, I personally found it a little hard to follow. There's a lot of diagrams, a lot of, you know, complex um, astronomical diagrams in the book. And if you didn't know any better and you skimmed through the book, you'd probably think you're looking at, you know, Sephirothic diagrams, quite honestly. Um, and so it's a very interesting astronomical book. Um, you know, Heimlich Tell was a polymath, so, you know, um, for, for those that, you know, understand and are initiated. Um, there isn't one field that Heimlich Tell was not a genius, so to speak. Okay, the guy was was extremely divine, to say the least. Um, and what's really interesting is that there is a section uh, or a little book, you could say, that was appended to the standard edition of Sefer Tehuna, okay? And in this section, uh, there's a very highly initiated Rob that basically states, okay, you've read the book, okay? Now I need to reveal the highest seals and proofs that the Copernican model is false and incorrect, okay? And so what he then proceeds to do is he gives a lot of seals and proofs um, from our ancient writings, from our ancient Midrashim, Talmudim, the Bible, proving that the Copernican model, you know, is false. It's very, it's very top-notch writing. It's, it's very brilliant. And, you know, I'll just go through a few, you know, biblical proofs here, okay, right? The Copernican model essentially states that the sun is the center of the universe and the sun is stationary, okay? Now, this, first of all, this contradicts the Bible, the word of God, okay, which is that, we read in Yehoshua, um, where it is written in, in Sefer Yehoshua, that Yehoshua, you know, he, it says in the, in the original Hebrew that he put, he, he stopped the movement of the sun and the moon, okay? So if Yehoshua, you know, if the, if the Bible says that Yehoshua stopped the movement of the sun and the moon, that means that the sun is moving, okay? that it's not stationary, all right? Then we have Psalm 19, verse five, that says that the sun goes out of its chamber and it runs its course, which is another proof from the Bible that the sun is not stationary, right? So you have to decide as a son of God, whether science is correct or is the Bible correct, okay? It's a no-brainer. It's an absolute no-brainer, okay? I, as a chief magician, Mr. Babylon, will go as far to say that you have to be a sheer fucking retard and stupid ignoramus uh, to contradict the Bible, okay? Now, Copernicus, if you read about, if you read his biography, um, it is, you know, famously stated that he was a polymath, okay? Now, listen, was he a, a polymath? I don't know. Maybe he was. Maybe he was a polymath. But even if, if he was a polymath, I mean, he you know, this is very oxymoronic to state, but he must have been a very stupid polymath, okay? I don't care how much Greek you knew. I don't care how much Latin you knew. I don't care how many books you read on ancient Greek astronomy. You contradicted the Bible, so you, you were really stupid, okay? It, it doesn't matter. You know, you can say you're a polymath and, and that you're fluent in four languages and you read all the ancient astronomical books, but at the end of the day, he, it's all for what? It's for nothing. It's for nothing because you just showcased your extreme stupidity. Okay? It's it's very mind-boggling to say the least. Okay? Um, the only explanation is that he was probably on the payroll of Lucifer. Okay? Whether he knew it or he didn't. So those are just the biblical proofs. Okay? Now, what I want to do in this video is I want to reveal the, the highest seals and proofs from the ancient esoteric wisdom from the ancient Kabbalah okay because you have to understand that we have um 
we have a lot of occultists, right? I'm always talking about all of the impure, ignorant and stupid occultists that are just so prevalent in this last generation, okay? Um, and, you know, even if you look at the, you know, the occult world in this last generation, okay? A lot of them like to get into the Kabbalah, okay? The, the Jewish Kabbalah is considered a very integral, essential part of the the modern day occult world. And you've got many, you know, ignorant Goyim trying to dabble in the Kabbalah, okay? But it's very, very inferior dabble because you have to understand that the Kabbalah is very closed. It's, it's, a very, it's very closed off, okay? Because, you know, we have all these secret societies, right? You know, Freemasons, Skull and Bones, the Lima. I mean, it's, it's a joke. It's all a joke, okay? The real true secret society, okay? are the grandmasters of the Kabbalah because the Kabbalah is very closed off. You have to understand that full initiation into the Kabbalah takes over a lifetime. And the most momentous prerequisite is you have to be fluent in ancient Hebrew and Aramaic. Now you need to ask yourself, okay, how many people are fluent in ancient Hebrew and Aramaic, completely fluent in it, okay, and have read all of the ancient Jewish occult works? Which, by the way, takes takes at least 20 years, okay, to reach a lofty level of initiation in the Jewish Kabbalah. And you have to be fluent in Hebrew and Aramaic. Now, how many people, okay, do you know that are fluent in ancient Hebrew and Aramaic and have spent 20 years in the occult yeshivas doing this work, this occult work? It's really, really easy. I mean, it should be really super easy to comprehend that we're talking less than a handful of people here, okay? And it should be really easy to comprehend why so much of the Kabbalah that you will find online is a joke and it's just a complete joke, okay? You're listening to one such divine man, okay, who has done the entire work, okay? Who is fluent in ancient Hebrew and Aramaic and has spent over 15 years, okay, mastering all of the ancient works. And not just, the, not just Jewish works, but even all other occult works of the Goyim as well, okay? That's who you're listening to right now. That's that's who you're kind of standing before spiritually, okay? So let us get back to the Kabbalah, okay? So we have all of these uh, stupid, ignorant Goyim that are trying to dabble into the Kabbalah. They all have respect for the Kabbalah. If you talk to any stupid, ignorant Goy occultist, right? They'll tell you, oh yeah, you know, the Kabbalah is very ancient. Um, it's very powerful, um, very true, you know? None of them have ever fully penetrated the Kabbalah, okay? They haven't penetrated more than a freaking millimeter of the Kabbalah, okay? With however much they've dabbled, tried, tried to dabble into it. Okay? That, those are the facts, okay? But they have a tremendous, the Goyim have a trem, the occult, the Goyim that belong to the occult world, okay? The facts are they have a tremendous amount of respect for the Jewish Kabbalah, okay? But now I'm going to showcase you their stupidity, okay? Because, you know, you want to say that you're a true occultist. You're a real true occultist. You're a real true magician right see i'm gonna test i'm gonna put to the test right now whether you really truly are an extremely high 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 occultist and magician okay and spiritual visionary for that you know for, you know for that okay because i you know as i'm always saying these occult goyim are so stupid these goyim occultists are like so stupid and ignorant okay so i'm going to give you the highest seal and proof here okay so let's look in the Kabbalah, at what is in the Kabbalah, what is considered the most ancient diagram, okay, of the Sfaroth, okay? The most ancient diagram of the Sfaroth in the Kabbalah is 10 concentric circles. If you've dabbled a bit into the Kabbalah, you've probably seen this diagram where you see 10 concentric circles and the tenth and most outer concentric circle represents Kether, and it goes down as you go more inside. It, it comes down to the lowest froth. Okay, this is the most ancient concept. This is the most ancient diagram of the froth. Now, if you read ancient astronomical books, especially coming from the Jewish masters, even the Jewish astronomical masters, they expressly teach that there are ten spheres of the heavens. Okay, they say there's 10 spheres of the outer heavens and 
they say that the seven planets represent the lower seven spheres. Okay. And then they talk about, um, you know, the eighth sphere, the ninth sphere, and the tenth sphere. And they'll usually say um, that the eighth or ninth sphere is, is the sphere of the, of the constellations. And then they say, I think they say the eighth sphere is the sphere of constellations. And they'll say the ninth sphere, um, they call it in the ancient Kabbalah, they call it the daily sphere. And that's the sphere that revolves everything in the heavens. It's the penultimate sphere. And then the, as to this 10th sphere, well, it's very esoteric. And only a few Kabbalistic work, works talk about the very esoteric 10th sphere and what it is. But essentially, ancient Jewish astronomy teaches that there's 10 spheres, always has. I mean, even before the Kabbalah, we're talking, you know, if you read um, the Rambam, he lived in 1000 AD, about 300 years before the Kabbalah. In his book, Guide to the Perplexed and his other works, he teaches, hey, there's 10 spheres to the heavens. Okay? This is very ancient. This is very, very ancient Jewish astronomy. Okay? Jewish astronomy 101, there are 10 spheres of the heavens. Okay? Now, what's going on here is we have to understand that everything in this construct is an image of the higher supernal constructs okay so these these 10 spheres of the heavens are a residual image of the 10 spheroth of the 10 supernal spheroth okay and so if you look at that very ancient diagram of the 10 spheroth you could easily mistake it for the 10 spheres of the heavens now, if you if you study ancient Jewish astronomy as well, they also teach that these ten spheres are ten concentric circles. Okay, and they teach that the fourth sphere is the sun. The fourth sphere, um, or is it the sixth sphere? Maybe it's the sixth sphere. I don't know. It's the, either the fourth or the sixth sphere uh, represents the sun. Okay, and the Earth then is a point in the center of these 10 concentric circles, okay? And we know that the point in the spherotic diagram represents Malchut, okay? And that the fourth or sixth uh, sphere is the sun, okay? Uh, actually, I think it's the fourth sphere. Um, so the fourth sphere, let's just say, you know, it doesn't really, you know, for the purposes of this, of this proof, it doesn't really matter whether it's the fourth or sixth sphere, okay? But we'll just say it's the fourth sphere represents the sun, okay? And then the earth is right in the middle, okay? So that is what is taught in Jewish astronomy. And that's one of the highest seals and proofs that the Copernican model is incorrect. All these ancient sages are revealing this very ancient, you know, Jewish, astro you know, Jewish astronomical model, okay? Voracious Jewish astronomical model, okay? So when you look at the tenth Sphiroth and you understand that the tenth Sphiroth represent a divine archetype and that the, the heavenlies are an image of that archetype, right? It logically follows that what our ancient Jewish sages and masters are saying is entirely voracious. Okay? And so that's the proof. That's the highest shield proof. Okay? If you're initiated... If you're going to say that you're that highly initiated, okay, into understanding the secrets of the tense for us, and you're working, you're actively have worked with the tense for us. And let me just tell you right now, there's no Goya cult that has ever practically worked with the, with the tense for us. Don't fool yourself. Don't kid yourself. Don't be that fucking stupid to believe that nonsense, okay? But let's say you have, let's say you're like me, you're a grandmaster and you have, you should understand this very basic, simple proof and seal. All you need to do is look at an ancient diagram of the tense for us and understand that on one one other level there's many levels to it and on one other level it actually also represents the 10 spheres of the heaven and that the sun is the fourth if the sun is the fourth sphere and it's going in a, it's revolving and orbiting okay the middle points of those 10 concentric circles which is the earth that tells you the earth is stationary the sun is orbiting the earth okay and it's also orbiting the moon and the moon is also orbiting the earth okay this is very similar this is this is the most simplest proof, okay? So if, you, if you're claiming to be a very high and mighty occultist, okay? Then you should more than know that the Copernican Medical is false. But where are all of the occultists, where are all of the Goy occultists coming out and saying, hey, the Copernican model is false, it's wrong, science is not correct, something is really fucking wrong here, and let's fix it. Nowhere, why? 
because as I'm as I've been constantly telling you as the chief magician of Mystery Babylon that the that the Goy occultists are really stupid and ignorant and profane. Okay? This is just one more high seal and this is just one more lofty proof and seal that Amen Amen. Anohi Rabba Khartu Khartu Maya de Babu Raz. Okay? That I am the chief magician of Mystery Babylon. Okay? And so this concludes this very, very, very powerful teaching if you have eyes to see. So, Shalom, Salam.